Friends are like diamonds, rare, precious, and often surrounded by fakes. We meet countless people in our lifetimes, but most will remain acquaintances, mere passers-by of no significance. So why is it so challenging for us to form genuine, lasting connections? Sit back and watch till the end to find out. Lack of trust. Trust is the foundation upon which meaningful relationships are built, but if your trust has been shaken before, it's understandable that you might hesitate to let new people in. Perhaps you've experienced humiliations, letdowns or betrayals in the past that make you wary of opening up again. This caution is a natural defense mechanism, protecting you from potential hurt. However, it can also act as a barrier preventing you from experiencing the joys and support that new friendships can offer. It's essential to acknowledge your feelings and understand where they stem from. Recognizing that your wariness has a source can help you separate past experiences from current opportunities. Give yourself permission to start fresh. Every new person you meet is a different individual, not a repeat of someone from your past. They deserve the chance to know you without being shadowed by the actions of others. And you deserve the opportunity to build something new, something potentially wonderful, without being held back by what's behind you. Building trust is a gradual process. It doesn't happen overnight, and that's okay. You can take small steps toward letting others in, gauging their reliability and consistency over time. Trust is earned, after all, and it's perfectly reasonable to want to see proof of someone's trustworthiness before you fully open up. Of course, this doesn't mean throwing caution to the wind. It's about finding a balance, being open to new connections while still protecting your well-being. Trust your instincts. They've been honed by your experiences. But also, allow yourself a bit of optimism, the belief that not every interaction will end negatively. It's also helpful to listen to your intuition. If something feels off, it's worth paying attention to that feeling. Not everyone has to become a close friend, and it's fine to maintain boundaries that keep you comfortable. At the same time, try not to let fear dominate your actions. Not everyone will betray your trust. Many are looking for the same kind of meaningful, trustworthy connections you are. Remember, Developing trust is a journey, both within yourself and with others. Trust is precious, and when you find people who honor and reciprocate it, those relationships become all the more valuable. Fear of not being enough. If you've ever doubted your worthiness of friendship or feared that your true self isn't good enough, you're not alone. These feelings are more common than you might think, and they can create significant barriers to connecting with others. When you struggle with low self-esteem, you might view yourself through a harsh, critical lens. You might question why someone would want to be friends with you or worry that you're not interesting, fun, or valuable enough to be included. These thoughts can be incredibly isolating, making you step back from opportunities to connect with others out of fear that you'll be judged once they see the real you. It's important to recognize that these thoughts are part of a negative internal narrative, not an objective truth. Your value as a person and a friend isn't determined by a flawless persona or an endless list of fascinating anecdotes. Real friendships are built on authenticity, shared experiences and mutual support, not on a perceived hierarchy of worthiness Start treating yourself with the same kindness and understanding that you'd offer a good friend. When you catch yourself engaging in self-critical thoughts, pause and ask, would I say this to someone I care about? If the answer is no, then it's a sign to adjust your internal dialogue. It's also beneficial to surround yourself with supportive people who uplift you. Friendships should be reciprocal, where both parties feel valued, and appreciated. If you find that certain relationships consistently make you feel worse about yourself, it might be time to re-evaluate those connections. Remember, 
Making friends is not about proving your worth. It's about finding people who resonate with you and appreciate you for who you are. Everyone has something unique to offer in a friendship, including you. Fear of rejection. Imagine standing at the edge of a new friendship. You're holding a part of yourself in your hands, ready to offer it up, but there's a catch in your throat. Why? Because deep down, there's a fear. A fear that this part of you, this piece of your vulnerability, won't be accepted or worst still, dismissed or criticized. Now, let's break it down a bit. When you think about sharing something personal, what goes through your mind? Perhaps you worry about how the other person will react. Will they understand? Will they judge? These thoughts can be paralyzing, but here's something to consider. Everyone experiences this fear at one point or another. You're not alone in feeling hesitant to open up. It's a universal human experience rooted in our intrinsic desire to belong and be accepted. Maybe you hold back in conversations choosing to listen rather than share. Perhaps you avoid deep topics sticking to the surface to keep things safe. But while this might protect you from potential judgment, it also keeps you from forming meaningful connections. After all, friendships deepen when we share our inner worlds, when we let someone else see us for who we truly are. So, how can we overcome this fear? The first step is awareness. Acknowledge it but don't let it dictate your choices. Remember, every friendship you see around you, every strong bond you admire, started with someone taking a risk. Someone decided that the possibility of connection was worth the potential for rejection. You don't have to reveal your deepest secrets right away. Begin with something minor but genuine. Share an opinion, a preference, or a small experience from your day. These little steps of openness can pave the way for more significant sharing down the line. And what if you are rejected? It's crucial to remember that not every rejection is a reflection of your worth. Sometimes it's just a sign of incompatibility and that's okay. Not everyone will resonate with you and that's not a failure. It's a step toward finding those who will truly appreciate and accept you. Social anxiety. Sometimes even the thought of initiating conversations or sharing personal thoughts can cause a whirlwind of anxiety. If you experience social anxiety, the mere idea of reaching out to others can seem daunting. It's not just about fear of judgment. It's the physical sensations, the overthinking, and the aftermath of self-scrutiny. But guess what? Many people feel this way, and it's okay to acknowledge that social interactions can be intimidating. It's important to recognize and accept your feelings of anxiety without self-criticism. It's a part of your current experience, not a definition of your identity. Having a few conversation starters or questions in mind can alleviate the pressure of thinking on the spot. Remember, most people love to talk about themselves or share their opinions, so your role as a listener can be just as valuable in forming a connection. Often, social anxiety is fueled by assumptions that aren't based in reality. Not every silence needs to be awkward, not every conversation needs to be profound, and not every interaction will lead to judgment. It's also beneficial to celebrate your efforts, no matter how small they may seem. Did you manage to smile at a neighbor or ask a question in a group setting? That's progress, and it's important to acknowledge these steps, reinforcing positive experiences over negative anticipations. If social anxiety feels insurmountable, seeking support from a therapist can be immensely helpful they can provide strategies and insights tailored to your experiences, helping you navigate social situations with increasing ease. Building friendships doesn't require you to be the life of the party or to share your deepest secrets right away. It's about gradual, genuine connections. The Digital Age 
It used to be an issue that plagued the younger generation, children glued to their phone screens, lacking the basic skills to communicate and socialize with their peers. But these days, everyone, young or old, has formed a dependency on their phones and devices. While technology has provided us with more ways to connect than ever before, it has also distanced us more than ever. Engaging with friends online can be convenient and enjoyable. However, these digital interactions often lack the depth and richness of face-to-face -face conversations. While liking a post or sending a quick text can keep the line of communication open, these actions don't substitute for the nuances of in-person interactions. All they do is create a facade of being connected without the emotional depth that comes from being physically present with someone. We miss out on non-verbal cues like body language, tone of voice and spontaneous expressions, the things that make us human. It is now more crucial than ever to set aside time for a digital detox. This could be as simple as setting aside certain hours of the day when we don't use technology. Put your phone away, don't turn on the computer or the TV. Well then, what will I do during those times? I'll be so bored, you might think. Remember when it was normal to meet people out in public, watch a game, to have coffee, to chat in person, to take a quick walk in the park? Why not do that? It sure beats staying in by yourself, right? The world is still a beautiful place, despite all the destruction and chaos that the media feeds to us every day. Life can take many things away from us, but never let it rob us of our humanity. Friendship Paradox The concept of the friendship paradox can be somewhat disconcerting when you first encounter it. It's the idea that most people have fewer friends than their friends do, on average. This paradox can lead to feelings of inadequacy or loneliness, making you wonder if there's something wrong with your own social circle. Firstly, it's crucial to understand that this paradox is a common statistical phenomenon, not a personal shortcoming. It arises because people with a large number of friends are more likely to be in your friend circle skewing your perception. Knowing this can alleviate some of the pressure or negative feelings you might have about your own friendships. If you're feeling like you don't measure up because you have fewer friends or your social life isn't as bustling as others, remember that quality often trumps quantity. Having a few close, meaningful friendships is more beneficial than having a large number of superficial connections. Invest time and effort into deepening these connections, creating shared experiences and supporting each other through life's ups and downs. Call them and let them know that you care. Plan trips, excursions together and arrange for routine meetings to catch up. These are the friendships that will provide the most profound sense of belonging and fulfillment. It's also helpful to diversify your social interactions Engaging with a variety of people in different contexts can enrich your life and provide different perspectives. Whether it's joining a new club, taking up a hobby, or volunteering, expanding your social network can alleviate the pressure you might feel from the friendship paradox. Remember, there's no set number of friends you should aim to have. What's most important is that your friendships are meaningful and supportive. By focusing on the quality of your connections rather than comparing your social life to others, you can cultivate a network of friends that brings you joy, comfort and a sense of community. Do you have anyone that you would consider a true friend? Someone you could call at 3 a.m. in the morning with an emergency and know they'll be there for you? Or have you ever been betrayed by someone you once considered a genuine friend? Comment down below and let us know. Give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It helps us spread the message to more people. Friends are the family chosen by you. Cherish the few true friends that you will make in this life, for they are the diamonds in the rough, formed under life's pressure and enduring through time. And until next time, stay wise.